morning, my name is Shannon Conley and I'm standing outside the Hubbard Museum of the American West in beautiful Rudoso Downs, New Mexico. I grew up here and even though I now am a researcher living in Oklahoma, I always love to come back to the mountains. The Studio Art Quilts Associates is having their opening reception today for a fabulous collection of shows here at the museum. These include Beyond Traditions, A Walk in the Wild, and A Color Runs Through It. So today, I think we're gonna have a bunch of the different artists, including myself, talking about our work, and we hope if you're in this area, you can have a chance to come by and see it. Hi, I'm Vicki Conley. I live here in Rito Sedans, New Mexico, and I'm standing here next to a, a quilt of mine called um, New Mexico's Turquoise Trail. It's part of this exhibit, Beyond Tradition, which is a showing of contemporary art quilting by uh, the New Mexico chapter of Sacwa. Uh, this is uh, this quilt that I made here uh, depicts sort of a northern New Mexico scene where it's very common for you to see uh, turquoise around all the windows and doors on um, the adobe houses in, uh, in northern New Mexico and kind of suits our, our, our exhibit here, uh, you know, to exemplify uh, the Southwest. I've been quilting since about 2003. Uh, I'm a studio potter by, uh, by profession, and I have found art quilting, and now I just uh, love it and love to do both. So I'm so happy that we have this exhibit here in Ridosa Downs at the fabulous Hubbard Museum of the American West, and I hope you'll be able to see and enjoy all of the things we have here. Thank you. My name is Shannon Conley, and I'm going to talk today about my quilt entitled Ring Around the Mole, which is currently showing as part of the Beyond Traditions uh, Sokwa show being held at the Hubbard Museum of the American West in Rudoso Downs. I'm a native of Rudoso Downs, but I now live in Moore, Oklahoma, where I'm a research scientist. And as part of a desire to understand more about my current surroundings and my current environment, I started this project to explore the native mammals that live in Oklahoma. So, with the theme of this show in mind, Beyond Tradition, I wanted to create an art quilt piece that harkened back to some traditional quilting aesthetic, specifically the mandala shape and the interacting rings, but using a more modern and contemporary approach. So instead of having geometric triangular, diamond, or square designs in the mandala, I have interlocking rings of mammals. Each of these mammals was selected to represent one of the superorders of mammals that's native to Oklahoma. So in some cases, I have two from the same group just because I couldn't uh, bear to leave any of them out. But it was really fun to explore what kinds of things actually live there. And even more fun to think about which things I see as an urban city dweller and which things are in more only rural parts of Oklahoma and which things are now becoming fairly hard to find. They're endangered or they're um, just not very common. So I have moles in the middle, which are all over the place, including in my backyard. Mice, also very common. Prairie dogs, which in spite of being once very widespread in Oklahoma, are now found only in a few locations. Rabbits, very common. Armadillos, one of my personal favorites, and they are all over the place, mostly dead on the side of the road. Possums, same thing, very common. And then out in the outer rings, we have a bison, which range in some parts of Oklahoma, but not quite as widely spread as they used to be. Uh, deer, of course, very common still. Coyotes, those are still a pretty common predator in Oklahoma. And bobcats, which are now extremely rare in the wild in Oklahoma. And then surrounding on the edge, I wanted to do a fun edge finish, something that harkened back maybe to a scalloped border of a double wedding ring quilt or a prairie points style edge but again, fitting with my mammal theme. So you can see around the edge, I have uh, bats, and those are also very common. There's a bunch of different bat species in Oklahoma. So all in all, this was a really fun project to do, to learn more about my new habitat, and also to really tie in some modern and traditional quilting aesthetic. My name is Rod Daniel, and this is a quilt that I call Buddy. So actually two horses that we found uh, at the Navajo Reservation. And I tried to create uh, as much detail with the stitching and let the fabric do as much work as possible. But within the stitching, I tried to get the texture of horse hair. Um, I don't believe you should stitch over an eye, so I left the eyes without any stitching on it and tried to find a fabric that let a little bit of sparkle come out with the eye. And then with the background, um, in, in, in stitching the background, not just a plain stipple, I wanted to work in a little bit of design that would mimic perhaps an agave plant or something like that. And it, 
the colors are very western giving it that look of two old horses on the Navajo reservation. This beautiful art quilt by Marianne Williamson of Miami, Florida depicts the uh, mountains of New Mexico and Colorado. Although Marianne is from Florida, she spends a lot of time in the mountains of rural New Mexico near Las Vegas and is inspired by the surroundings there. The artist's statement reads, I spend a lot of time in New Mexico and Colorado, and the Rocky Mountains are a great inspiration. This piece shows the results of erosion over the millennia. The blues of the skies, the purples of the rocks and boulders, with the patches of green grass, evoke the theme of mountain meadow. The piece is composed of all hand-dyed fabric made of the, from, by the artist, and is extensively painted, and then thread-painted, heavily quilted. Right here next to it, we have a beautiful three-dimensional fiber sculpture made by Nora Beebe called The Wood Nymph. Her artist statement says, I wanted to create a Shakespearean character of mirth, whimsy, and delight, a spirit that could easily be overlooked if hiding in the woods. It has a hand-molded fiber material face, extensively covered with quilted leaves and painted leaves on a metal armature, and really evokes the spirit of a wood nymph. I'm Barbara Wattler from Hollywood, Florida, and uh, I love to machine stitch, and uh, I took a photo of, or I took one of the real leaves from my husband's Kroger plants, and, uh, and blew it up and made this piece on my sewing machine, so I stitched every inch of the fabric so that it, you can't see any fabric under the stitching. And I made these squares and then I stitched them all together, following the old adage of old traditions of piecing a quilt together. And, uh, and that's all I have to say about it. Hi, my name is Lynn Welch, and I am a member of Sopwa, New Mexico. This piece is called Taking a Break 2. I live in rural New Mexico, and there was a whole group of birds that came by and just stopped on our driveway, and one of them just kind of sat down, and the other sat around it trying to just wait it out till it felt like getting up and flying, but they were obviously migrating. I have some migrating birds in the background. This represents the Black Range where I live and uh, just some fun, funky beaded flowers in the foreground. But I love whimsy, and these birds just had the neatest shapes, and I just really had fun making this piece. This fiber sculpture by Susan Shire of Silver City, New Mexico, is titled Icara. It's one in a series of vestiges, that which remains from memory or mythology, from custom or costume. It's composed of commercial rayon fabrics, taffeta, cotton painted with acrylic, clipped and sewn, machine quilted, and hand assembled. You can see that it has many layers, including a bunch of dimensional feathers, and it goes all the way around like a garment, a traditional garment. This art quilt by Nancy Steidel of Santa Fe, New Mexico, is titled Heavy Clouds, No Rain. It's inspired by nature's devastation by the extended drought and wildfires. This is an issue that's near and dear to the heart of many New Mexicans where wildfires are a chronic ongoing problem. The piece's two panels, the front panel, is heavily beaded. The artist spent almost a year doing all of the hand beading on this piece. You can see that it's extensively covered in dense copper beads throughout the main panel as well as down below. When you get up close, this adds a rich sense of depth and texture to the piece, really evocative of our natural landscape. Hello, I'm Judith Roderick, and this is my Three Rivers Petroglyph quilt. This petroglyph area I've been visiting since the 1960s. I just love it. And it has such elaborate, they're, they're geometrical, and then with animals in them, like the sheep. So I'm, I paint on silk first, so this is all painted on silk. And then I, using the soy wax technique, and then I did a lot of borders because there's a lot of birds at Three Rivers, and I love birds. So I did birds up the side. There's a lot of suns and moons and stars, and so they're across the bottom. And then more of these wonderful 
treaty made yeah, labyrinth yeah, kind of things across the border. And I've always seen Ray, seen um, hawks sitting in there, and I've always seen lizards on the rocks in there. So we have a little bit of Right, and it comes apart. But you don't have to like this. I painted my scarf the same day I painted the quilt. I thought, someday this quilt will be done, and I'll wear my scarf when I'm standing by it. So there it is. That's beautiful. What are the ghost birds in the sky? Well, they're birds also flying out of the picture. There's just a lot of birds. They are ghost birds. They're there. They're all there. I visited this play. I visited Three Rivers yesterday again on my way down here and said hello to some of these birds and creatures again. Thank you. Hi, I'm April Foster. I'm from Santa Fe, New Mexico. And this is one of my pieces that I did. It's called Green Toes because at the time I couldn't think of anything else to call it. <laughs> uh, my husband thinks it's a lizard. I thought it was an alligator, so I just called him Green Toes because he has little beady green toes. It also has nice bells on it. And I like doing this, which has some metal uh, wire work in it, uh, lots of buttons. It's a woven thing. And uh, these are handmade cloth fabric beads with wire on them. And it all started because I got this wonderful burlap hand-dyed fabric. And I thought it was so pretty, and I needed something to do with it. So we have green toes. Hello, I'm Carolyn Little Castaneda from Santa Fe, New Mexico, and this is my quilt. Um, my quilt was inspired by the blind painter, New Mexican painter George Mendoza, who um, paints a lot of paintings and then they are made into fabrics. And so when I saw some of his fabrics, I decided to make a quilt that kind of represented his fantastical way of painting. And what he does is he makes a lot of different kinds of flowers and a lot of kinds of different um, images. So I picked them apart, recut them, reshaped them, and made new flowers from his flowers. And um, I made clouds from his clouds, but um, as I've been hearing from other people who view the quilt, sometimes they say that these clouds look like jellyfish or like they look like other forms of underwater um, animals, which is kind of interesting to me. So there it is. Um, what I did mainly was fuse things together and um, there's no, they're all uh, raw edges and then I quilted it and I put an inset and a border and that's it. I'm Betty Busby from Albuquerque, New Mexico. This piece is called La Luz. I made it in 2011 several years old and it is of a famous hiking trail near me of that starts at 5,000 feet above sea level and goes up to 10,000 feet above sea level taking the vegetation that you see here from high desert vegetation on up through an alpine forest and I have been there and seen these northern harriers cruising looking for their lunch, so I put him in there as well. More recently, I have been working on three-dimensional artwork. This is a very recent piece of mine called In the Weeds. And it's called In the Weeds because it reminds me of the ocean and the colors uh, that you would see underwater and with you know little creatures swimming amongst the reeds. It's made from hand-painted silk that is quilted in the normal fashion on a heat shapeable batting and then it's formed into uh, the cylinder shape that you see here. So thank you for listening. This fabulous dimensional art quilt called Nasturtiums Beauty and the Beast was made by Holly Altman of Santa Fe, New Mexico. The artist statement reads, hot Santa Fe days and cool nights are the ideal environment for nasturtiums. Bold and delicate, their intense, dazzling colors, platter-like leaves, and sensuous tendrils are miniature jungles for the bug world. Aphids love them, and ants love aphids. A host of other crawling critters wander their foliage. Can you find them? Much like any good piece of art, this one draws you in closer, 
It starts out drawing with the bold colors, and as you get closer, you can see all of the little details the artist has incorporated, including lots of dimensional leaves and stems, as well as fabulous bugs throughout the piece. Here's, so we got a little fly and a caterpillar and another little uh, fabric wire and beading bug. Here we've got another little bug and a train of ants. These two pieces were made by Phoenix area artist Betty Hahn, originally for a show called Paradox. You can see that each of them sort of illustrate a pair of docks protruding out into the water. They were made as a color study to illustrate how the same green color can look very different depending on the colors juxtaposed next to it. The artist statement reads, acrylic paintings quilted on a stationary machine, a study in the paradox of color changing based on proximity to two different colors. The two pieces are each painted with only three colors, but the four separate colors of green appear different because of what's next to them. So you can see here she's got a green uh, color chip. This is actually the color that's painted on all of them. And so even though all four of these greens look different, when you hold up the color chip, you can see it really is the same color of green. Hi, my name is Nicole Dunn. I'm from Los Alamos, New Mexico. And this is my quilt, Heart of Tucson. And it's based on a photograph I took in Tucson, Arizona, um, and where we found a whole bunch of heart-shaped cactus. And it's actually, that's, those are the shapes that they were um, originally. And I used the photograph and just used it as a, as a design, um, with my interpretation, of course, to um, fabrics and stuff. Um, it's all um, applique. Except, and these parts are little bits of fabric, um, little tiny um, pieces of fabric that are appliqued on top. Um, there's sequins, lots of um, quilting, and that's about it, I guess. Thank you. Hi, I'm Lynn Rogers. I live in Rio Rancho, New Mexico. This is my piece, lapping with red, with red buttons. Um, I discharged some hand dyed fabric, some stuff that I had hand dyed, and then I discharged it and got these kind of arcs, which are sort of like the Drunkard's Path, which is a traditional quilt block. Um, this was a faster, easier way to do that. Then I cut the big pieces up, put them together like this, and added this splash of red. And this is it, dancing with red buttons. I'm Julie Filatoff, and this is my piece, Just just Suppose Juxtaposed. And the center panel is canvas that's hand-painted with acrylic paint. I've used sort of a Rorschach blot kind of effect to get the center portion. And then what I did is I scanned this part right here, I blew it up on my computer, and then I created these raw edge applique pieces, which I fused to the commercial cottons, and then I very heavily, densely quilted all in the different areas around it. Um, it's called Just Supposed Juxtaposed because this section is juxtaposed with the outer sections. And that's my quilt. Thank you so much. Hi, I'm Colleen Kadetsny. I live in Rio Rancho, New Mexico. I love to dye my own fabric. That's how I start. I start with dyeing my fabric and then after it's finished with whatever magic I'm putting on the surface of that piece of white fabric, then I look at it and I decide what it's going to be and I continue snipping, stitching, maybe some more dye, maybe some more paint, beads, and I end up with something that then, one of my favorite parts is machine quilting. I like to doodle all over my quilt. It's like drawing with a needle on a piece of paper, but this is my piece of fabric. And this is my quilt in full bloom. Hi, I'm Mary Olivier. I'm the uh, organizer of this wonderful thing that I call Pueblo Redo. I did another one earlier that I had called Passages, and I just adored it. This is a topical map of how you look down from a, uh, an airplane at our dry, arid landscape. 
this part of it is the old school, the old world, with the Pueblo here. Lots of uh, farming, meandering path going up to the Cuba. Go across the river and you go across time. This is BIA housing. This is a metal oh, yeah. thing coming, ladder from Home Depot. This is a labyrinth that has been very stylized because they had the things to do it. And very little farming. So this is beyond tradition. This was tradition. Thank you very much. Hope you like it. Hi, my name is Val Saddington. I live in Albuquerque, New Mexico. I've been a piecer for 30 years. And this last year, I decided to try something different. So this was a challenge from uh, what's called the West Coast Wonders show. And it showed in Long Beach and in Houston. I, this is my essence of California. And that there's the ocean, the redwoods, the Center Valley with all the fruits and vegetables, and then the deserts. And on top of this, throughout every year, every season in California, are the wildfires that go across. So this is um, my rendition of the essence of California, and I hand painted some of the fabrics, the sky, and some of the uh, blues, and uh, I had lots of them. <laughs> I'm Michelle Jackson, and this is Color Flies, and it was just a study in color um, and the patterns of butterflies. And so you can see the background is a blown up wing, and if you really look close at a butterfly, you can see all the, I guess, veins um, in it, and that's the stitching, and a lot of this is tool on top of uh, color, and it gives you the shadow look, and then also lace, and um, that sort of comes from another life. <laughs> and uh, so I incorporate lace sometimes and, um, and uh, tool so, um, and a lot of this here is also uh, My name is Lorraine Hollingsworth. I'm from Albuquerque, New Mexico, and this is my piece called Cascade awesome. that I created um, as part of a challenge to use black and white in one color. Um, I use a combination of commercial fabrics and hand uh, painted fabrics in the black and the white with the teal added in. And it's based on three inch squares that I put together and arranged in different orders <laughs> and then um, machine quilted. Hi, I'm Julie Filatoff, and this is an artist's book, and it's called Enchanted Views. And it's photographs that I've taken throughout New Mexico. And then I have paired them with hand dyed fabric either beside it or um, below or above it. And although it's hard to see in this light, each of the photographs is quilted to some extent. Not a ton, but to some extent. It's um, an accordion style book and uh, just it sort of tells the story of New Mexico from long away landscapes and also close up details. I'm Pat Gould, and in addition to painting and photography, I also have been doing fiber art for about 20 years, and photography since I was very little. Um, this piece is based on a photograph I took in Dubrovnik, Croatia. I'm fascinated with old doors, windows, and gates. Just love the texture and the sort of the story that this old thing in architectural detail is telling us. So I decided to play with the texture of the Dupioni silk and painted it with some acrylics and paint sticks and then heavily stitch it. And I'm very, very pleased with the way it turned out and it won a niche award in 2013.